it depends entirely on, on individual circumstances. Within, for certain study, or, well, certainly within some studies, but also off study with certain treatment regimens, most centres will use some sort of prophylactic antibiotic whilst patients are receiving treatment and for a period afterwards. That period is a little bit vague. Nobody has a, there isn't a prescribed cutoff for when you'd stop. So some people do stay on prophylactic um, medication for quite a time. The other group that may be on prophylactic treatments are those who have ongoing chronic um, problems with infections. So say respiratory um, infections, bronchiectasis, then often low dose long-term antibiotic can be a very effective way of controlling that. It depends a lot what the pneumonia was, what bacteria or virus caused the pneumonia, how sick he was with the pneumonia. I mean, there are too many other variables that you would have to take into account before deciding whether or not somebody needed something in addition to the standalone treatment for the pneumonia. Most people who get a chest infection, which is what pneumonia is, will have treatment for it, they'll recover from it, and they'll be fine. They won't need necessarily to be on uh, long-term antibiotics, but there may be some exceptional circumstances that would uh, guide the doctors to suggest that that was a beneficial thing to do. I'm sure it'll be the genetic background of that population. Um, we, we often link diseases to um, HLA typing, which is one of the sort of markers of people's tissue, tissue type. And there's certainly uh, uh, a suscept one HLA type that makes you more susceptible to CLL, which is not seen in Asia. So it'll, it'll be population-based, I think, there. Whereas in other parts of the world, it's a little bit hard to know um, what the factors are. It's usually more than one thing. <laughs> It's a very good question. Um, I wish I knew the answer. Just, just be pleased you're female, really. <laughs> um, because not, not only that, um, women do better with the disease, and that's very consistently been shown as well. And, and my, my predecessor at Marsden, Daniel Kotowski, just, just published this year um, a, a paper about gender, looking at thousands and thousands of patients in the UK treated on trials, showing that, that women do have better outcomes. And we don't completely understand that. Overall, um, there is an, a slight increased risk of, of other ca cancers in CLL, probably related to the you know, faulty immune system. Um, and we've known that, and that's independent of treatment. So lots of people have tried to look at the impact of the treatment on those, um, and, and that's always been difficult. The, the Germans have very recently, I don't know whether it's, I reviewed the paper, so I'm not sure, even sure whether it's published or whether I should be saying about it, but they've, have, they've looked at, um, again, thousands of patients treated in um, trials in Germany, um, and actually the increased risk of, of cancer in those treated patients is not as high as I think people have previously um, sort of bandied about. So I think that it's likely that the risk of second cancers is overall a bit less than sometimes has been, people have been led to believe. But skin cancers I think is interesting. Most of these are non, what we call non-melanoma skin cancers, so basal cell carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, and they, they are very treatable. And they, I'm sure they are at increased frequency in CLL, and I'm sure it's because of the sort of immune surveillance in the skin is not, not as good as it would be in a, um, uh, someone who didn't have impairment. But, and that's why skin surveillance is really important, and you're partly responsible for that yourself. It's, it's important to have these things checked out if you get any abnormality on the skin. The, the other thing, of course, that, that sometimes skews our reporting figures on second cancers is because we see people all the time. So if you're being reviewed in clinic every few months or even once a year, um, it's likely that not only your cancer will be diagnosed, but secondly, it will be reported. 
And, um, and so part of the sort of association with CLL may be slightly artificial. It's just the same way of all these patients with heart disease who were on the placebo in a very big trial against aspirin. They all did better than you would have expected simply because they were being seen all the time by doctors. Um, just, it just helps to pick up things earlier. If you're vitamin D3 deficient, and you can have that test done, um, then yes, there probably is some benefit. But whether it's beneficial to the CLL, I don't know. Um, there is a study looking at that at the Mayo Clinic. And there is some sort of background science that might suggest that vitamin D um, is important. But, um, but, you know, there's no harm in taking it.